Page 76, Aud Lang Syne, a very famous piece, usually done around New Year's, all over everywhere. Let's talk about this. This arrangement, I don't know, you get some good arrangements and some poor arrangements, and it would be better with a band or orchestra playing this, but we'll do what we can. Going to go through my routine of learning it. Let's see what we got. It's two pages long, although there's repeat signs, so it's going to be longer than that. However, it's only two pages to learn, and that's really what I'm looking for here. Trouble and bass clef to start. One flat in the key signature, we're either in the key of F major or D minor, because those are the two keys with one flat. If I look at the end, the very end, we're here. Whatever, that's an F chord. I figure we're in F major. However, as far as the scales and arpeggios go, I'm going to do it for the key signature. So I'm going to do the F major stuff and the D minor stuff both. Just keep the hands and it all working. 4-4 four, four time signature. I'm going to take it one hand at a time. I like to try and finger this connected if I can, but sometimes these arrangements, it's not possible. We do what we can. Right hand, we're up here to start, and then suddenly, we, now we got to come down here. It's the same notes down here, except we're adding the B flat. So it's, you just got to lift up and move. Keep your hand in that position. Be ready for the B flat. And then come down, second finger. One and two. Now that's fine. And then here. And if you don't fit up in here, you got a problem. Because then you got to come here. You can use fifth twice. But if you can't come up here, because then you can slide back out. And then thumb. And use one, two, four over there so I can save the fifth finger for measure five. One and two. Fourth finger, measure seven. And two. They say a three. I'm, I, uh, I'm going to do a three. I'm going to do a one. And then cross over and do a, a two four. Here, I'm not going to use three there. So measure eight is one and two. I find that a little easier. And then two three and out here. So I stay out here. I think that's easier than doing what they're doing. Yeah, I don't agree with that. So again, measure seven, you're here. Stay, stay there. And then I'm gonna do a one, th one, four. And then a two, three, there. And then we lift up and come up. And I'm gonna do a four here. Here, I want to connect this. It's melody, I want to feel it. And then I can go here, third, again. Now they're telling you one, two, four, and the only difference here is that I'm playing an F and not an E. I don't know, but here. I measure 14 again, one, four, and then now on this measure 14, you can come down and use three on both, or I can do a, a two, three. And, and measure 16, I'm going to finger the same way I did measure eight. One, two, here. Left hand. Or you start here and then here. Okay. The next measure is here. Connect these if you can. Scrunch up, little finger. Just make sure you, these are following under the fingers okay. Right there, measure eight again. If I play thumb half note, then I gotta come up again. I'd rather not. So I want some other finger on the half note. Well, it's easy enough. It's measure seven. Rather than three, I'm just going to use four again. Four. Now I got second finger on it. Now I can play it. I think that's so much easier. So I'm going to use four on the C for measure seven. So we can measure seven is here. Four. And, and I do it two, three. You can do that if you want. But I prefer not to. And then come down. 
12, you have octaves. Hinge at the wrist here. Don't use a bunch of arm on this. Just, just a real low motion. Just come down a little bit. And this is like another octave, except you're not playing the top note. Because you want your hand on that, your finger on it, I should say. So it's like I'm doing octaves, I'm just not playing it. Now, when I get this sort of thing, anytime I'm getting a pattern in a hand where I'm moving, but it's the same physical feeling, it's the same position physically, these are octaves. I aim one finger and hold my hand in that position, just let the other fingers do whatever. I can aim either finger, it doesn't matter, you should be able to aim either one. So here, if I aim like the thumb, I'm doing that. I'm going to hold my hand in that position and let the little finger go along for the ride. I'm concentrating on the thumb. Or I can concentrate on a little finger. And then let the thumb go along for the ride. Looks and sounds the same, but I'm concentrating on this. And that's how I do this. Now, the tendency in that is you'll tense up because you want to hold that position. You don't want to move. But if you'll flex at the wrist, do this at the wrist, that will help you stay relaxed. So I'm here and I'm flexing to do the next one. And it isn't a big move like I'm doing. I'm exaggerating. It's just a little move, but just make sure it's a flex at the wrist. You're not coming up with the whole arm. Here, just a little flex. Except I'm not playing that note right now. That's how I do those. That technique comes in handy in a lot of places. Not just octaves, but other kinds of patterns. Anyway, let's go on. Major 14, I got off there. Well, you got the same problem in major 15 and 16 as we had up above. Measure 16, so I'm going to finger it the same way I did measure 7. I'm going to do 4. Now I got that. And at the very end, the left hand, that last note has an AV8 under it, so you just play it down an octave. If you have a short keyboard, you don't have it, just play the lowest stuff you have. It's close enough. Put the hands together. Now, when I first put the hands together, I'm liable to hesitate. I don't really care. Fortunately, the left hand's not moving, so I can focus on the right, and then come down. And as I play this, I gotta get the left hand up where it goes. Here. 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 through the whole thing to make sure the fingering is working okay because sometimes when I pick a fingering out playing one hand at a time it works fine but when I go to put the hands together and they get close together sometimes they get in each other's way and I have to change the fingering this piece is fine we don't have to do that here but you may run across that then I go through and I'll get rid of the hesitation so it's a steady beat throughout and once I have that that I can play it okay then I add the articulation, and here it's the phrasing. You have a fermata at the beginning. Just hang on to that as long as it feels right, and then lift up and go on. It's a new phrase. Try and connect the melody. Lift up. New phrase. Now sometimes you can't connect the melody. It's like a major four. I'd like to do the. I can't because I got to play the A again. It's the arrangement. Now the pedal will help us out, but I still like to do it with the hands of a can. So one thing you can do, since it's an arrangement, first you learn it the way it's written, and then we can rearrange it. What I typically do in this kind of a situation, and this is measure four. Then I'm going to connect that. Well, I'll just tie the A. I won't play it again. I'll just hold it down. Just hold it down and add it. This way I can connect it. Here. However.
driver will play it like it's written, and it won't connect. The pedal will help us out, but I like to do it with the hands. And then to measure five, you're lift up, new phrase. It's a lift up. It's like taking a breath. Lift up. Here, in the, in, in the right hand, not the left. as best you can and then at the end lift up. And you'll notice that the right before measure 10 there appears to be only one beat in that measure this is the fourth beat of the previous measure they could have written it and put that there at the end of the first line but it, this helps you in reading it it makes it clearer that it's a pickup beat but it's beat four of the previous measure so the on, on measure, measure 9 actually starts with a dotted half note at the end of the first line here. And then, then at second line, this, that's still measure 9. But it, it, it's a new phrase. And I connect the left hand. I mean, you, you can lift both, I suppose. It's interpretation. But it's a new phrase. Anyway, I'm lifting up for the phrases in the right hand. I'm trying to connect the left hand for the most part. Now, once I have the articulation, then I think about the dynamics. The dynamics apply to the melody. Although this at the beginning, the chords, they're just chords, so it's both. Mezzo forte is moderately loud. Whatever you think sort of loud is. And then you come down to moderately soft. Mezzo piano. That's the melody. Everything else has to be in the background. And you're going to go up and measure four. Up to measure moderately loud. Not loud, moderately loud. And stay there. And then you get to measure nine again. You go down. Well, this dies away on its own. Just, just let this go. You're you're under here, but get softer. And then all of a sudden, moderately loud. The left hand's in the background. At measure 12, you're going to crescendo up to loud. Don't get loud until measure 13. There. And you're staying loud for the rest of it. Get into it and feel it. As far as the speed goes, depends on how much eggnog or wine we've had to drink and so forth, but generally it's a nice, pleasant piece. Don't drag it. You get to measure 16, there's a retard on to it. However, if you're going to repeat it, I would recommend you don't repeat until the second time because we want to keep a steady beat going, especially if people are singing to it. Keep a steady beat going. And then on the second time, when you're almost done with it, then you can start slowing down and people will realize, oh, we're, okay, we're getting finished now. We're about done. And you stay slow. I measure 16th to slow. Slow. Second ending. slow too because you slow down so now you're slow don't drag it too much though you have to feel this and get into it there's all kinds of recordings of this available but don't just listen to one if you're going to listen to recordings listen to several because they'll do it differently and that's what you're after what are the differences now they've added pedal and we kind of need pedal on here to help us connect things and for the overtones and so forth but I'd like to hear the phrasing so I'm going to make some suggestions at the beginning, I'm going to push the nose down first and then the pedal. Here. Now I'm going to lift the pedal with the hands because I want to hear like a breath, like a new phrase. And I don't pedal the pickup beat. And it's going to be overlapping to connect. And I'll measure 
measure three and any other measure like this, when I get a new phrase, I'm not pedaling the pickup beat. I want to hear the phrase. So a measure three, it's here. Lift up, lift, lift pedal with the right hand. measure uh, seven. If you're going to pedal measure seven, you got to change the pedal with every beat. And don't pedal the last beat. Measure nine. Lift the pedal. Now you can pedal the pickup beat here because I need help connecting the fingers, connecting the notes. But make sure there's a silence right before it. And again, on measure 11, lift up pedal. But go ahead and pedal this pickup beat because I need help connecting the notes. Lifting the pedal up for the phrase. This is measure 13. Here. But I'm going to pedal the pickup beat. Now it's not to connect the notes so much, is it because we're loud? I want the overtones. I want a lot of stuff going on. And there's no pickup here, just keep pedaling it. And again on measure 15, you can pedal that, but change it on every beat. the last beat. The first ending. Yeah, that's it's like we did at the beginning. Don't pedal the pickup beat. But at the second ending, go ahead and leave it down. Here, just leave it down. Even though you're supposed to get softer and I didn't, we won't, we'll pretend I got softer, but just leave the pedal down. Listen to carefully to what the pedal is doing to the sound and the difference. And again, this is one of the reasons we learn a piece without pedal. First, we make sure the fingers are doing everything and we're hearing what the fingers are doing. So when we add pedal, we can hear the difference in the sound. It's important. If you don't like the difference, you don't like the sound, then adjust the pedaling somehow or leave it out. Now it's got first and second endings at the bottom of page 77. I assume you know what that means, but just in case, when you get down to the first ending, the repeat sign sends you back to the reverse repeat sign over on page 76. And you do the whole mess again, and then second time you do the second ending.